Central Park here at Greenwich will provide one of the most spectacular event settings for the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games. As home to all Olympic and Paralympic equestrian events, the park will be transformed for the duration of the Games. Atkins' team of engineers and technical specialists have taken on one of the UK's most iconic heritage sites to turn it into a state-of-the-art sports venue and then return it to its natural state. Atkins engineer Henry Westwood is overseeing the creation of the temporary venue here at Greenwich Park. We have the entrance to the uh, Greenwich venue for the uh, Olympic and Paralympic Games, London 2012. It doesn't get much more grand than this, no. This is um, one of the, the landmark venues for the Olympics. We're very excited about it. It's very different to, to any other job I, I've ever done and probably will ever do again. It's, um, there's a lot of thinking differently. It will be a stunning venue, but as you'd imagine, building a fully functioning sports arena in the Royal Parklands is not without its challenges. We're standing right in the, the very centre of the main arena, so we'll have um, three sides of stands around us, and then this open facade of the National Maritime Museum and, and the focal piece, which is the Queen's House, in the centre here. So on this particular site, there's a, there's a four metre level change from one end of what we call the field of play to the other end of the field of play. We're going to deal with a three metre build up and we're, we're trying to do that in the most sensitive way possible. The success will be handing back Greenwich Park so that Londoners can use it again. It's the challenge. The challenge of this venue is this is a World Heritage site and um, we use the analogy it's trying to build a 23,000 seat stadium in the middle of Stonehenge. No different. The concept we use is the legacy in Greenwich Park is that there is no legacy. You will never know the Olympic Games were here. We need to hand it back just as spectacular as it was having held a, a large sporting venue in the middle of it for three, four months and then handing it back exactly as we found it. It was less than four weeks ago that we were celebrating the two-year mark to the start of the Paralympic Games in London. And by the time those Games are over, the Great Britain team will have no doubt taken success in Beijing and repeated their medal haul in venues like Greenwich Park. Our equestrian stars are among our most successful Paralympians, and as nine times gold medalist Lee Pearson explained, they've not finished yet. At Paralympic level, I've won nine gold medals. That's three gold medals in Sydney, three gold medals in Athens, and three gold medals in Beijing. So the plan for London 2012 is another three, so that hopefully will be 12 at 2012. I think I'll be bored of that number very, very soon. Obviously, London 2012 will just be the icing on the cake, really. That's what I've always aimed for. So I'm definitely going to go full steam ahead. <laughs> the Paralympics in 2012. It's always been my aim since I first started on the World Class Programme <laughs> six years ago. So if I, if I could get selected and if I could win the medal, that would be great. Greenwich Park is just one of the Olympic and Paralympic sites Atkins is working on for 2012. Another prestige venue is the Weymouth and Portland National Sailing Academy, home to the GB Olympic and Paralympic Sailing Team and the Olympic Sailing Site in 2012. We caught up with Stephen Thomas, Hannah Stoddall and John Roberts, the crew of three in the Sonar class with their own dreams of glory in 2012. Our dream is just to win the gold medal. Simple as that, really. Nothing more. And I think we're in the best place to do it. Got a great facility and just everything's in place. And we've just got to make sure that we get everything we can out of the next two years, or just under two years now, 
to make sure we perform at our best on, on those five, six days of competition. John's the driver and he has a natural ability with driving. It's just one of those things, he can make a boat go fast without seeming to think about it, if that makes sense. Steve's the brawn of the operation <laughs> and uh, I'm technically the brains, occasionally. <laughs> I like to call us as a married threesome, you know, we've been together for seven years now. Um, you know, and we know when each other, when to pick each other up, when everyone's down and we also know when to leave each other alone when someone needs a bit of quiet time but yeah we all get on very well, we socialise together and that's quite unique so, you know, in the sailing world. Richard Hill is Atkins' man on the ground or ruling the waves, making sure that this classic ocean venue is completely games ready. To see it on, on, a, on a drawing, an A3 drawing, and, and now in, come to life in reality, it's fantastic. The facilities are great. The, the site is obviously one of the best sailing sites in the world because of the nature of the of you get the wind without the waves. Um, and I think from, from that perspective, it should be a fantastic set of games. So there you have it, just under two years to go to the start of the Paralympic event here in London. The UK was the birthplace of the Paralympic movement shortly after the Second World War. And in 2008, the Great Britain team gave us some of our most memorable images from the Beijing Games. Imagine these scenes in 2012 when our capital city provides the backdrop to another great festival of Paralympic sport.